Hey everybody, and it's episode so six. six. Yeah. I was about to say something else, sorry. It's alright. I mean, thanks for trucking through us, trucking with us, don't truck through, through us. Through episode five, yeah. all three parts of it, right? Yeah, we had a lot <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what are we going to talk about this episode though, Midnight? Oh, right. We're going to have a pretty uh, spicy subject today. It's... Can you separate the art from the artist? Ooh, caliente. <laughs> I say yes. <laughs> yeah, so basically we want to be talking about, is it possible to love the art but hate the artist? Yeah, can you separate the two? You know, it's artist wife, midnight. Writer husband, Neff. With our co-star, MDC. I'm looking up fast to destroy y'all with. Uh, well, okay. I, I guess we'll just insert the caca or some boom noise. Oh, uh, just ignore what she said, eh? <laughs> Wait, why? I don't think this is a, a, a. Well, I wasn't gonna expect for this to be a debate. I mean, I feel I feel kind of different about it, right? Because it's like how you feel, homie. It's like I I want to <laughs> I want to support the the artist when I love the art. But if the artist is a dick, I don't want to support them. Yeah, I feel like there's levels to it. Like, because, like, be this is going to be a very complex. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be It's going to get really complex. Because the... Okay. So... You want me to start it? Well, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say it's the creator of ruining... Ru- the creator of Ruroni Kenshin, right? Yeah. Like he's uh he's a pedophile, right? Or oh, I don't think he's a pedophile, but he's Whoa, like that was I think I remember that. Like he's 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 for that, right? Um like into like w- w- there's a term for me pedo, I guess, but it's like Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. He's 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 into that. And um like, when I found that out, I was like, man. Because I literally found that out while I was watching Baruni Kenshin yeah. for the umpteenth time. Blah. I remember that, too. You were watching it for, like, a good time. And then you just stopped. I don't know if you stopped because of that or you just watched all the episodes. It did kind of punt. Like, I'm not going to lie. It did kind of punt, like, a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, of course. But I was <laughs> I was enjoying it. I was I was enjoying it up to that point. Um, it's just that, yeah, I think there was a video, um, I forgot who, but someone made a video where, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the dude got charged with possessing, uh, child pornography. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I I was checking it up just to be sure. I I don't want to call someone, uh, you know, a pedophile and, with it's not true. Yeah. Like it's something completely different. Do you want to touch? Yeah. Do you want to? I touch? don't think that's an appropriate. <laughs> no, it is. You know why? Why? Because that song is by Gary Glitter. Okay, right, and he's a pedophile. So Gary Glitter, y'all ever heard that song? It, uh, okay, I don't know the exact lyrics, but it's like, mm, hey, rock and roll. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that song was done by Gary Glitter back in the seventies, mm-hmm. and he, he, in the eighties, I believe, maybe the early nineties, he took his uh, computer in to get uh, repaired, and they found child porn on it. Oh, okay. Ooh. wow! Now, of course, he said he was innocent, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not—I don't—I re- believe he went to jail for it. But then when he went out, you know, he said he was innocent. Other people think he was innocent, right? Uh-huh. But then one one like sometime later he went to um I believe it was Thailand and try yeah I know already yeah pretty much uh, I know he tried to on. um yeah he tried to sexually assault this little girl <laughs> down yeah so that song that the, the the one song I like by him is called Do You Want to Touch? I'm not kidding you. That's uh, literally the name of that song and it got so much creep reek factor on it. Yeah. But yeah, here's, yeah, here's a, I can here's imagine so. Here's a point to it. Like one, I'm not you know, I was never a fan of Gary Glitter. I just like that one song. So I like that song. But here's another thing. That song was also covered by Joan Jett. Do you are you know if you're gonna ask if we're familiar, the answer is probably no. 
I mean, your fans, <laughs> you know, the audience probably is. I, I don't like assuming things, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that just kind of opens the door on things. It's like okay, it's like to me, I always looked at that. It, it, it really comes down to you personally. Like, how do you feel? Can can you honestly listen to an R. Kelly album after knowing what he did? Oh, that's a that's good one. Yeah. Up to you. I mean, okay. I think what what if what he's doing is kind of the okay. Can y'all? Okay, so can y'all listen to Pat? Like, is it okay to listen to past R. Kelly albums? Like, can you just be like, well, I'm not supporting any new stuff. He's he's going to create. But so, I mean, like, if you support the, or should it just be like in a sense like you just illegally download everything <laughs> from him? See, the sad thing, most of us do that for artists we like, so that doesn't even mean. Yeah, exactly. so, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I mean, like, don't go on Spotify. Like, just just go to YouTube and just steal all this all this good music. So with that, um, that's a good question because well, see, when, okay, go ahead. Well. Well, you go ahead. Okay, so for me, I grew up with R. Kelly, and I hate everything that he's, well, pretty much doing now because that shit's pretty messed up. With that being said, I can understand, and I hope this is not misconstrued the wrong way, I understand that music is a very powerful tool. It's embedded into humans from going centuries back. It's pretty much a part of our DNA. As so, Santa says, we actually cannot live without it. Right. We, we have to create. We can find music in anything, whether it's a tap or whatnot. And so music can be a um, placeholder for significant events in our life. And therefore, certain musicians are known throughout a decade to define an entire cultural movement or a significant in uh, an era. R. Kelly, unfortunately, was one of those individuals. Unfortunately, well, yeah. R. Kelly was unfortunately one of those individuals that was uh, a staple of 90s R&B and hip-hop. He, like, his love music, a lot of people, and a lot of people to this day, know the lyrics to, or, you know, you know. He probably gave birth to you, just saying. <laughs> Prince and David Bowie gave birth to a lot of people, just yeah, saying. Yeah, it's like that. And, you know, so it's like, I feel like I can appreciate what R. Kelly uh, musically gave to the world in the past, but I cannot support him as a person. But you guys are going to be, I don't know if you're going to be surprised. My my stance on this is that I can, in various different like levels, I can love the art that was created, but not in any way want to associate with the artist. And that's a really hard thing because... Okay, two things. First, you. Um, midnight. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm pointing, but they can't see who I'm pointing at. Yeah. Um. Well, don't you feel like if you're supporting the, if you're not going to support R. Kelly the person, if you support his music, that isn't that still supporting him? You're supporting his pockets. Yeah. Either way, I would not at this point though, and when it comes to it, I would not buy any of his music at all. I wouldn't go to any of his concerts. I wouldn't um. Buy any R. Kelly merch, even if it's old CDs. Like that's mm-hmm. just a no. But if I have it on my phone, I I could to be honest, I've skipped past some of his songs on Spotify because it does leave me with a bad taste in my mouth. Because mm. I'll have it on in the shower and I'm like, yeah, no, not this, no. <laughs> because he has stained it. There is a stain that's there. Okay, okay. So I was never a fan of R. Kelly, uh, even back in the day. Because well, when I was too young to really be a fan of anything honestly mm-hmm. yeah there's literally one song on my phone by him called your body's calling which you wait know, but were you we were all fans of space jail that i y'all, believe y'all were, fan, that y'all were fans whoa of space jail. what wait, yeah. you didn't you didn't like space jail like hold on hold on before we get into that the other thing that i wanted to say <laughs> so deaf people don't live wait what, what? huh yeah, what? What? So deaf people don't live. Deaf people don't live. Yeah. What do you mean? Shut up. No, that's not what I mean. I mean wow. humanity <laughs> as a whole. Okay, first off, yes, you can live. 
Yeah, I'm not getting Okay, see, no, I was I was very confused. <laughs> oh, when you okay. said that, I was so triggered. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> to counter that, now, they do, they, 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 a rhythm. They mm-hmm. can feel, like, the rhythms being tapped out. That, they can too. Feel, like, it, there's oh, still rhythm okay. in music in some Yeah, way. fool, oh, okay. science. <laughs> you should I mean, learn it sometimes. Yeah. Literally, you know Beethoven. What? And other musicians yeah. would place their ear, and they could not hear what the piano was playing, but they could feel the rhythm of it. And well, like, I mean, I think it was like partially. He was yeah, he was partially deaf, right? But I mean, he, he was still like going hear deaf. That well, like, oh, okay. But well, actually, you know, deaf people go to concerts now. You know, they they have, they have those ear thingies. Well, not only that, but they also have this uh, sign language people. At uh, concerts, you, wow. you see the one with the woman doing Wu Tang Clan with sign language. Oh my gosh, I've seen that. Yeah, but that's yeah, like a real thing. Like joke. it's not a joke or anything. No, yeah, they they joke. do have those. Uh, oh wow. Yeah, in fact, there's a video I saw recently. Well, not recent. It's been a while now about how do deaf pe- deaf people experience music. So hmm. yeah, it's 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 they do. <laughs> yep. It's yeah, we okay. definitely got to. I definitely got to check that out. Yeah. Can you hear me doing the scritcher scritcher? Yes. I, I got can. a bunch of new Copics, Copics and Prisma colors. I'm telling everybody. And I, I they were gifted to me from an art friend and yo, they are an amazing person. Shout out to Damien. You do thanks so much. It's a whole tub wait, and then some. Shout out to who? Damien. Damien. Oh, wait, who? Sorry, I just put his last name on there. Damien, our art friend. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no you know, no, nothing. Ignore my my nothing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes. Yeah. Anyways, going going back. Um, I'm figuring out how to use them. Sorry. So here here's the thing about that. Uh, about okay. So yeah, that one song I like by R. Kelly, right? Um, I okay. I'll tell you what. Yes, I I liked. I believe I can fly back in the day because you know I mean, it, who didn't. It's a very yeah. inspirational song. Yeah. Now I hate it. So, <laughs> and, and, and and I'm talking about way before his allegations. I hate it because they wouldn't stop playing it. Okay, like, I good can God. Agree for that. Yeah. yeah, but let me tell you what's it was funny, funny though. when the kids used to add a little bit back in the uh, back in school. But let me tell you something really funny though. Like you know you got grown ass adults nowadays defending this man even though he was caught on video. And let me I'll let twice. you know. Twice. Yeah. Twice. And I'll I'll have you know back in middle school at my graduation. Mm-hmm. You know the song he did for the movie All League called "I'm the World's Greatest." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> at the freaking graduation, they would say. I'm the world's rapist. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I went to a really hood school back in the day. Yeah, they, they pulled no punches. But the, the, the thing about it, they knew this. These are freaking, t- like, young adult teenagers. Yeah. They had no issues calling it what it was. And right. you got the, I've literally just deleted some 40, I don't know if he's 40 or 50, because he, he might be 40, but he looks 50. Because I, I think that guy was, like, stressed out because he just gets hung up on BS. I don't know. I'm glad he's gone. Anyway. What are you talking about? Yeah. Someone I deleted on Facebook because oh. of R. Kelly. Oh. Oh, wow. You, wow, really? Yeah, this guy was the... He was one of those people talking about, you know, fast little girls. You know, that, that whole... No, don't even. That, that whole disgusting. crap, you know. And I'm just like, dude, are you freaking... You're... 40, looking like 50, 60 years old. Are you serious? It's just excuse nature. Is it really bothersome? Uh, I just wanted a night to it's, my It's okay. We, I, told, I told Midnight that there was no possible way you can be able to draw and record at the same time. But I was Somebody trying. Somebody doesn't listen. I'm just going to drink this. Well, before. traditionally draw it at the same time. You can probably... Bring your shin tick and the whole PC. Give like a... Yeah, we can do like tri- uh, digital. Get you... Uh, an iPad and stuff have people seeing it yeah you get updated whatnot. woman no <laughs> I wanted to go back but yeah you know it disgusts me though because it's excuse culture and it's I, and, excuse and, 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 rape culture but this also they goes excuse themselves this also goes to exactly what I'm getting at like okay like I said I'm Generally speaking, I'm not a fan of R. Kelly. He made one song I like you know and I still listen to that song without shame because first off I was never a fan of him so there's no added connection there but at the same time, there are artists I am fans of, like Africa Bambata, like um Chuck Berry, um uh, uh Chuck Berry had some allegations. Oh Lord, he has a whole legacy of oh, allegations. Wow. I... Cause see, and the and the crazy thing about it is is he he transported two underage white girls at that back in like the fifties across state lines. That was illegal and you know underage you know there's that but in the 80s i think he was caught 
filming women in bathrooms at his restaurant. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Chuck. <laughs> Oh yeah, he he yeah. I mean, the he, first one oh too, but that one oh even more. Yeah, cause the first one you 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 know there's 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 stipulations. You can argue it might have been more of a race thing, or you know they you know there's a lot of reasons why it's like eh, okay maybe, but yeah, he was caught in his own restaurant with cameras in the bathroom of his restaurant. So. And it's so interesting wow. because for that, I didn't know about that. It literally, if it made a pop, it sizzled away real fast because. They do um, concerts in his honor in D.C. like every yeah. summer. Yeah, there's a whole like they revere Chuck Berry as an icon of a uh, go go. Yeah. Okay, you're thinking of you're thinking of um. Ooh yeah, you ooh my. Am Lord. I doing it off? Oh. Sh- no, no, you're thinking of Chuck Brown. Chuck Brown. Okay, all right. You have to understand. <laughs> Those are pretty close together. Okay, I don't feel as bad. Barely. Berry, <laughs> brown, brownberry. Okay, totally. Brownberry. I'm blushing, but no one can see it, so it's fine. Oh, Lord. Ooh, my God. See, that's why I was like, Chuck, like, what? No, Yo, I'm, like, I'm talking about beard. Okay. possibly, well, actually, he is no longer the, the creator of rock and roll. Uh, Sister Loretta Thrope is now. But um, he was a rock, rock and roll icon. Way oh, back. okay. I know run what you're around about. around the automobile. Yeah. yeah, that that guy. Oh wow, still though. Yeah, I didn't even know about that about him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and here's the thing. Again, I don't feel any kind of way when I listen to that music. But here's the thing though, when because I'm a fan of a lot of people that are done some crap or pieces of crap. The fact is, or at least. They've done work to die a door. H.P. Lovecraft being a racist. Uh, that is one, yeah. Um, it's hard. Roman Polanski, <laughs> the, the film director. If you heard that name, you probably you probably either know him for his movies or his rape. It was one or the other. <laughs> um, yeah. Which we don't condone, like, at all. And the, the, and the thing Just about it, I, I'll say... The thing about I don't mention any of these people without mentioning that. Uh, to be honest, it's I think like, that's important. You know, I, yes, I'm a fan of their music. It means a lot to me. But at the end of the day, they did this thing. It's just like if I had a friend that went to jail for something, it's like, hey, we were cool, but they did this thing. You know, um, you probably still appreciate the vice of whatever that friend had gave you during that time in your life, but you know that. They did a thing, and they need to serve the time for it. It's kind of like with people. We always talk about our ancestors, but I'm like, how well you know your ancestors? Like, <laughs> you know? You know that's a people good always, I don't know. It's people, people are, like, selective with that type of thing where we want to completely get rid of a legacy of someone because of what they did. But it's like, you know, that's pretty much darn near everything, almost, when you really think about it. You know, I want to come back to that, too, because I want to tie that into my take on the cutoff culture, because I think that's what this ties into. Mm-hmm. It cutting off the artists from the artwork, cutting off people that you know for things that they did, said ten years ago, seven years ago. When you know, for me, ten years ago, I was um, seventeen. So if someone came to me and is like, "Okay, well, you said this thing on <laughs> MySpace or Facebook when it came Facebook seventeen? No, I don't. No, I, I was definitely on MySpace ten years ago. I, I think, well, yeah, you were. I think I was just getting no. I don't remember that. Yeah, I was. Bro, 10 years ago, you were 19. You weren't 17. Oh, that's God. Thanks for putting me out there. Wow. I told <laughs> Sorry. You. I forget I, my own age. I'm just like. I just kind of wanted that for a moment. To I'm your like, husband of mine. Nah, don't make me older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't hold the person accountable. And for me, well, before I get to that, Neff, Cupid, uh, Cupid Shuffle comes on at wherever you're at. I mean, let's pretend you're a dancer for like a second, like that you would actually go into the dance floor. Would you? You haven't said on your take on it yet. Um, sorry, Cupid Shuffle. Cupid Shuffle, R. Kelly's. Um, oh, I don't fully know the dun 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 dun. Oh, is it Love Slide? Yeah, no, it's Love Slide. It's thinking of Cupid Shuffle something else. I get names confused all the time. Yeah, I'm about to say the the jump that they was playing in Chuck E. Cheese's for a bit. Oh yeah, they. Did. Oh yeah, they did. Oh yeah, everybody do the love slide. That became a. Also, I love. hated that song back then. Like as I say, I'm no fan. Um, <laughs> I don't know because it's like I don't really go. That's like ten. normal. Normally, the events we go to is your family events, and they don't 
they don't do the electric slide. They don't do the love slide. My, they don't do the. My sister might put it on. The shuffle, no. It depends on which sister. Yeah, she'll grab the um, and she'll hook up her phone for like five seconds until it dies because it's always dying. I guess I think my phone's always dying too. No. Yeah, for the kids or whatnot. No. You you Not that's no because love slide. you are always in the next part of the house asleep <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but um to be honest <laughs> no i've I've never i've never well, did the love hypothetically slide. speaking so like it comes on right and it's it's r kelly yeah i mean i've never done it so i'll still all never right do that it. doesn't work in the situation <laughs> so i guess for me the separation of the art and the artist there's like um mdc said there's a lot of people throughout ancient history throughout modern history um even now, where you don't know every aspect of their life, and yet they've created something in your life that you like. Um, the idea that the person has to be a saint in order for you to love what they do is a little bit difficult, especially when you probably aren't a saint yourself. They're not a yeah, saint. None you, of them is a saint. Shouldn't log in your eye. But that doesn't like, mean that we should just allow it. To, what? <laughs> doesn't mean I mean, that we should I just allow them to continue to the... hold these positions of power. Because... Okay, so I'm breaking up Vic McNolia. Well, I was, I wanted to comment on what you said though because oh, it's like, I just felt like you used the wrong example for Probably. me, like you know, screw R. Kelly at the end of the day. Like I don't, I don't care um, about his music, his music yeah. and whatnot. I don't, you know, ignition remix. Literally, okay. the, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> But if you would have said Michael Jackson, oh. someone who's you know whose name is being dragged in the dirt yet again, and the the thing that's interesting about it is because, like, the more times that is brought up, the more people that are going onto the side. I feel like that he very much was a pedophile, and he very much did touch those boys. And whatnot, because I remember um, there was uh, was a news article where police were saying that they have found uh, child pornography on his computers or something, right, on his hard drives. Wait, uh, you're not talking about the one when they found his secret room, are you? Was that it? Yeah, yeah. I think it was where it was his secret room, and a lot of people. Wait, hold on. A lot of people, like including me believed that to be true yeah. until it was later like noted that it was actually false. Yeah, it was debunked. And whatnot. And now you got this whole situation with the uh, the movie that's supposed to be coming on HBO um, next month. And, you know, everyone is in a riot and whatnot. Even more so than I feel like with the whole uh, Bill Cosby thing. And the thing that kind of sucks is, you know, he isn't here to defend himself anymore. You know, it's funny you bring up the movie because uh, who who's seen um, What's Love Got to Do With It? The Tina Turner and Ike Turner movie. It came out back in the 80s, I think. I, I saw it, but I um, vaguely remember it. Okay, so I never saw it, but I, I learned a few things about it because obviously that movie essentially completely like obliterated Ike Turner's career after that. You know, everything had basically come out, you know, about how he abused Tina Turner, et cetera, et cetera. Now, another thing, now, it's it's funny to note because I think Tina Turner also said that they actually toned down on a lot of things that happened. But from my, my understanding, and, you know, whoever correct me when I'm wrong, there's apparently a rape scene in the movie that isn't based on fact. Oh. Uh. So... <laughs> You know, you have, like, this kind of awkward gray area where it's like, yeah, he was abusive as heck, and he, again, they toned down what he actually did, and hey, he very met well have had, you know, probably raped her, but the fact is, it didn't come from anything either one of them said, and that's, that's in particular what ruined his career, not necessarily, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that obviously the allegations of abuse did too, but you know, you know, rape is like a, a few steps past abuse, you know, and and that's the one that he really went under for. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of a, I don't know how to, you know, this it's kind of strange because it's like that's the one thing he didn't even do, you know. 
And of course, oh, you're saying that he he never did that to her. Like as far as I know, it, or it just no, didn't happen in the way that the movie portrayed it. As far as I know, no one's ever verified that ever happening. Period. Mm. You know the abuse, yes, but yeah, no one. As far as I know, nothing that that uh, particular incident or him doing that has never been actually verified. And and one reason I bring up Ike Turner is because you know even though. Tina Turner was obviously the star. Ike Turner, you know, he was, you know, it was they were Ike and Tina back in the day. Not only this, but you know, Ike Turner was he was real influential behind the scenes. You know, he gave Hendrix his first guitar. You know, so he has a humongous legacy within music. You know, and um, and that's another thing because and it's, and you know, in the same time, it's probably easier to let go of him because a lot of what he did. Is wasn't even seen really, you yeah. Know, it's yeah. like you know, it was like um, in the shadows. Yeah, so it's like it's a little easier to you know cut him off. Mm-hmm. But as you brought with Michael Jackson, because I'm, I'm gonna say, you know, the, the media is dangerous because the thing about it, it's like you you have stories that come out and you have like the the real side of the story, then you have the false side, then you have people's assumptions, and once it gets in the public. Everyone makes up their own mind what's really happening. You had people that just assume. You had people that was, you know, they were defending Mike no matter what. And I'm yeah. like, listen, I'm a, I grew up with Michael Jackson too. I'm a fan of him too. But the fact is, I don't know the guy. None of us know the guy. Yeah, you know, none of us knew. And knew you know, you you we base our opinions on these cases based on what we know, what we think we know on people. But can I can I say this though? Mm-hmm. I feel like whether he did it or not, that shouldn't change your, like, relationship towards another person. Oh, like... Like, you know, you have you have certain, certain people that will probably be like... Um, delete me. Yeah, delete me. <laughs> uh, don't, don't follow me if you, you know, believe these allegations. Follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so forth. And it's like... I, don't know. I like, feel like that depends little, like, on because, like I said, I just you know I dropped dude for defending R. Kelly because you know I just I'm like if you're defending this total stranger, then God God forbid one of your friends get these allegations. Well, no, 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 no. I, that's I oh, feel like that's different speaking? because R. Kelly is obviously um, guilty for oh, well, it. I'm saying true. if if for people questioning that. Like oh, you know, yeah, like yeah. I legitimately question if he did it or not. Yeah, I think that's unfair. But I feel like uh-huh. like you should. That's a that's a legitimate thing. Like we don't know him. We never you know met him. Sure or at least know. us in this room, we've never met him. So it's a it's a natural thing to question. So right. I feel like people that are just in the same boat as us mm-hmm. that never met him and mm-hmm. who were fans to just be like, no, there's no possible way that he couldn't have done this. I'm like. No, yeah, that's not. Basically, if you're just dropping somebody totally purely because of their opinion on something, that's just, there's no, we, we wouldn't know. When it's just your opinion, too. Yeah, it's just and an but, opinion. There's... But this is what's funny, like this past week. And so I'm about to bring up something that we talked about bringing up. So one somebody on my friends list, uh, <laughs> they said, if you don't believe, what's his name, uh, Jesse, oh Smollett, 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 Smollett. You can, I don't, know. I, I, don't I can't, I don't know the what exactly we wrote, but it was all on along along the lines of you can f off basically, and this is at the point where his case really wasn't looking good, right? And I had to say honestly from the get go when I first heard it, it, you know, he had my sympathies. You know, tensions are high. You know, yeah, I'm always going to something that we would assume is fake. Y- I mean, is exactly not you know, right now. I mean. Um, I kind of did. I kind of... Well, well, it, didn't, it didn't make sense to me when I first read the article. Well, well here's the thing. This, and this is what I'm saying. Like, you know, again, he had my sympathies. But at the same time, the the one thing that made me suspicious is when he claimed that they said this is MAGA country. Because I was yeah. thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, listen. But didn't he retract that? Or he, ret- he retracted that they had the hats, right? He did? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because at first, they was like, they had the... The MAGA hats, and they were screaming, it's MAGA country. 
And then he then I was reading an article that he later retracted and said he never told the police that they had the MAGA hats. Mm. I don't know about the whole thing with MAGA country because I don't even know if that was like a legitimate thing that white white people have been saying. Like I, no, and let me and see that was my point because you know I've confronted Trump supporters, I've debated with them, and when now when I heard that I'm thinking that really does not sound like some of Trump supporters are gonna say. No, me personally, and you've I've actually talked cool to them. Compassion and sympathy. Like, uh, you do talk to a lot of Trump supporters, too. Like, you're actively in those rallies. Uh, not those rallies, but you're at those protests. Yeah. Of those rallies. No, of those protests, right? Of those marches. Well, well both. All yeah. the above. Yeah. <laughs> but, you're in uh, the thick of it. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, and you know, I've talked to them, and, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot, of, there's not too many good things I could say about them, but the thing about it, you you understand patterns, you know, I remember, and the thing about it, when I heard that statement, it took me back to um, 2015, like right before Trump got elected. And the, this black church had burned down. It was the second one that burned down. And I remember when I first saw the image on, on the side of the church, a uh, spray painted on it said, uh, vote Trump. And I was thinking to myself, that has me really suspicious. And then sure enough, it turned out to be an inside job, a member of, of the church burned it down. And honestly, I don't know if that was his motive was to incriminate Trump supporters. I'm not even sure, but you know, as, as brash as they are, it's like you, you had to look at the patterns of things They're you know, throwing, you know, it, it, it just didn't seem legit. You know, I'm like, I ain't never heard of Trump supporter, no matter how racist they got ever say, this is MAGA country. Like, you yeah, know, I've yeah. never heard that. And I'm just yeah. like, Huh, I don't know about that. And why would you burn down the church to say vote Trump? You know, it's right, like yeah. things like that just don't make sense. But there were situations I mean, the, the also noose where and the and the bleach. There were situations also where before we go back to that part, where there have been um MAGA supporters, uh Trump supporters that have tried to blame vandalism on blacks. Like they go and they go vandalize other houses and then like uh F Trump and and Blacks for Obama or whatnot, and it's like, yeah, there's not that really many black people in this neighborhood, so that's already like one thing. You remember the one where the where the old white guy came out and it said black people's rule on his, on his yeah, driveway, like that. and someone called him like, black people do not say black people <laughs> rule. Like what the <laughs> heck? <laughs> So it's just no, I've never, I've forth. never seen that one. I've never seen that one. There are pretty obvious signs for when someone's pretty much, but right. I didn't or, see it for Smollett though. I think I might have been there a little bit for me, but I mean, it it just doesn't seem like something. Didn't, that it, you didn't sh- it? It was like it happened in Chicago. Yeah, that was another yeah. thing. And it's like, like uh, and it was like how many random white people are <laughs> walking around in Chicago with a noose and, and bleach. Like the, for for one particular black guy, and, and then it's like, how many <laughs> Trump supporters watch Empire? Like that's that was the thing. biggest thing. Yeah, that's what that thing. was the you biggest know? thing. I'm like, really? Like I'm black, and I don't even watch Empire exactly. any, like, anymore. I don't watch Empire at all. <laughs> never like, have, never will. and I'm like, but like, that's the messed up part. Yo, like we're living in an environment where you would think that framing um this hate crime. And on doing it yourself and framing these random non essential like we don't have security cameras on buildings, like we don't have forensic uh science, like we just don't have like that's so it's pretty effed up. It's pr- it's like on a betrayal also, level. I don't even know the guy and I just feel like There was a lot of betrayed. sources where it wasn't trying to People claim like what the liquid was. Like he kept saying it was bleach. Oh yeah, but but it was they like, kept saying that it was like a unknown chemical yeah, or unknown substance. That. And I was like, yo, if it's bleach, it's bleach. Did they piss on the dude? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to, like, like it was, it was, it was so weird. Yeah. It was so weird when I first um, seen it. And I want to say my reason for not believing it wasn't like the same reason for probably other people. Like I wasn't thinking like, oh, you know, like. He's just immediately just searching for attention. It just seemed it just seemed weird. It just seemed off. A lot of people have said that too that things didn't connect. And but I mean like, that's what yeah it it just yeah. it didn't it didn't connect. It and just, that sucks because it's like in the end you found out of course it didn't connect. He was making it all up. He got yeah, his yeah. possible allegedly he got his uh, his personal trainer personal trainers 
Oh, and the brother. Yeah. To I come was like, in and do really, this. dude? You couldn't go on Craigslist and find two <laughs> white guys to beat you up? Well, they probably would have killed him. So. I mean, <laughs> bro, man. bro. Like this is not like to be honest. He should. Be, I feel like he should be blacklisted. You know, to be honest, for it's, a time period, I guess. Well, no. Let, let me tell you there something. There has to be See, some type of punishment. Like, what do you mean blacklisted? Look, like they say Hollywood. he can he can have like prison, serve prison time. Oh, I mean, yeah, the, only thing, I the only time he had. On... had only thing he had going for him was Empire, right? I mean, I mean I I'm pretty no sure idea. that was going to moment to him into uh, other stuff. Which, I, and that's the thing, I don't understand what was the point of line. Yeah. He should, I don't get. He should be blacklisted from from black stuff. No, yeah, I he, mean, he shouldn't be allowed to go to the. Uh, it it to messes the, up the, the black, black functions anymore, and especially the black LGBTQ Ooh, community. See, and see, that's where I was getting They're at already, because because yeah. listen, there's nothing worse. Than, than a, 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 somebody that lies about something that actually happens. Yeah, that you actually know. happens to people. Like, you know, that's, that's true. Not a joke. That's true. Because let me tell you something. You know, the, the same thing goes, you know, for rape allegations. It's like, you know, you got people out here who are actually victims of very serious crimes like that. And then you have people that lie who aren't, not only is that really fucked up on so many levels, but also, because, you you know, depending on how the law handles it, that person, an innocent person can go to jail, and, you know, the yeah, society just... isn't too kind on certain crimes, so, you know, there's that. But then, <coughs> you're also undermining actual victims exactly, of crimes, which yeah. is really ugly. And In a time where victims are already having a hard time, this Me Too movement is doing, I think, great when it comes to um, picking up, well, the, the Me Too in its black roots, because now that it's spread yes. out as usual. And see, I was going to get to that doing too. Better. Because it's giving victims a voice without immediately getting the immediate backlash of, yeah, but what if he didn't, you know, because that's what the thing was. Yeah. It was always the, oh, I don't know, you're kind of seeking attention kind of thing, but it's still there. But but let me point out, speak going back to like celebrities real quick, and can you love the artist and that the Oh, art. yeah, we were talking about that. So, <laughs> so, now, I wasn't, again, this is another person I was never a big fan of, but... I will see her because I watch movies, and she's the daughter of one of my favorite film directors, Daria Argento, Asia Argento, and so she was she she quite recently was one of like the biggest spokeswomen against um, Weinstein, and you know and you know she was very vocal about. It. Then <laughs> she was exposed in bed in a photo. In bed with a seventeen year old when she's a seventeen year old uh kid, um and she's when she's like thirty seven. And you know, rumor okay. has it Anthony Bourdain uh -huh. paid him to be quiet about it. So oh. yeah, that's right. If if you don't know Asia Argento and Anthony Bourdain were a couple, like bef before he died. So oh. yeah, and the thing about it <laughs> Obviously, she immediately was pretty much dropped from that position of being a spokeswoman on this. And it just goes to show you, like, you know, I'm really disgusted by that and yeah. her actions. And the worst thing about it, like, we were talking, yeah, I'm going to have to throw Drake in the mix because we're talking about grooming now. Because oh, she had acted in a movie. She had, she had known this kid, like, way back when he was young. And basically was kind of like a mentor to him. And then one night when he was 17... Brought him up to a hotel room, got him drunk, and had sex with him. So that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And I mean, one of my favorite movies, you know, she's in it. The church. I mean, she's a little girl in that movie, so it's, it's kind of different, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's before she was, you know, and you know, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't feel weird watching. I mean. Okay, this is this, like I said. This is a very complex yeah, it's, it's, situation, but I will say I definitely completely think she's a piece of shit. Now I stopped following her on IG. I basically like, you know, that just disgusts the hell out of me. It's thinking, what the hell is a thirty-seven-year-old woman doing with a seventeen-year-old? Oh, I know. Never mind. Same thing. R. Kelly is doing with little seventeen-year-olds. <laughs> you yeah, know, this was so integrated into our culture for a time. It wasn't. There was no repercussions for a time for doing this. You would get a slap on the wrist a little bit. You might get the whole. This could be a scandal, and then money was tossed out, and it was like it's okay again. 
you could go on and be successful. And this has become such a staple in our society for centuries to come. But I don't feel like, I feel like with every generation that's born, it's become less and less of an okay thing to do. I don't know if we're going to be the generation that finally just stops it all. But I know that we are a generation that's raising more and more awareness and the non-tolerance of it. We need to be less tolerant of these things. We need to practice, we need to be tolerant of non-tolerance. There's a video that I watched about that and I really liked it because it goes along with the whole like freedom of speech, but we don't tolerate, we really shouldn't tolerate hate speech. Oh yeah, because hate, hate speech is the act of war. I don't give a damn what anyone say. Like, if, you, if you are literally promoting violence against people, then that's what it is. It is You shouldn't violence. tolerate that. You're just not getting your hands dirty, that's all. Yeah. Coward. Like instigators <laughs> and things like that. If you're co- colluding it to, to bring war upon others that you don't like and you're practicing this hate speech, just to go on that real quick, you're pretty much, we shouldn't tolerate that. You're a person that shouldn't be allowed to continue to associate and be on a platform where you can continue to spread that. You're the reason a Jedi almost killed a black man. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was a Liam Neeson pun. If all y'all just forgot that the Phantom Menace happened because y'all don't like prequels. No, we're not going to let that down either. No. Those are still racist thoughts and we shouldn't. You should just say, I'm sorry. I feel so horrible because I definitely thought racist thoughts. You should own that instead of being like, what? No, I'm not a racist. For that moment, you were. And to be honest, I'm just saying, I've never went through my life like, oh, I'm so mad at this black dude that broke my heart. I'm going to kill all black dudes. Okay, it was way more. That was a much <laughs> oversimplified. I know. He had it. Nonetheless, I feel like on various levels, there is something <laughs> deep within you that automatically, if that's your trigger reaction. Yeah, no. but... So now, stuff, now, huh? now, speaking of Liam Neeson, now I am a bit of a Liam Neeson fan, so let me <laughs> let me kind of jump on this one. Now, honestly, I wasn't that. What, I, I wasn't that. No, nah, nah, I wouldn't say that. I mean, honestly, I'm becoming less and less surprised about a lot of things. Uh, to be. Mm. To be honest, there's a lot of things that haven't surprised me in years, to tell you the truth. But, I mean, hearing that, I looked at it like, I mean, everyone's got a pass, to tell you the truth. You know? And a lot of people were like, um... You know, there were some people that were really pissed off about that. And it's understandable. He kind of said it in a somewhat casual way. To, like they said, yeah, he was kind of tone deaf about it. And I understand that. But, you know... I've been around enough white people to hear some pretty sad and distressing things about how they used to think, things they used to say. Um, at one point, knew a person who was actually part of a neo-Nazi group uh, uh, on on MySpace. And um, oh, I remember the, the, he, he actually told me the thing that turned him around. He actually just asked himself one day, what makes uh, their women different from ours? You know, and that was like, his opening to change. And, you know, this is the guy that probably actually acted on that violence. You know, he was, like I said, he was actually a part of a game. And, you know, people were upset at Liam Neeson, but I'm thinking, you know, I mean, have you looked at the history of, like, Europe? Like, you know, I mean, I don't expect, you know, if you if he said he had this, these thoughts, like, 40 years ago, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like thoughts of a white guy in Europe would have about 40 years ago. You know? And I feel like you should, as a... Uh you are allowed as consumers of his um films yeah well I, films yeah i was thinking of like more of like yeah his films as consumers of films if you're a fan of his work Anderson, stop talking over Anderson. g i mean uh, anna g oh I, <laughs> 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 um you have a right to be disappointed upset you have a right to feel that in some ways you know he did something wrong and it made you feel <laughs> negative about him I don't know if you means that you should go burn the streets down and burn it down was, every film that he's ever, every theater that his movies ever played. It was in. random. It is random. But I feel like you can't fault the man for having a thought, like you said, like what forty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah you can't fault him for having a thought like that forty years ago. Like I completely understood. And with him saying black bastards, I didn't feel anything 
against it, like no hatred toward the man. I felt like, like he was saying it he, in his mind state at the time. Yeah, you know like how many how many of us um really um how many of us act or think irrational thoughts when we're angry? That's all I looked at it has. I mean, I don't really understood his point of bringing it up. Like I'm pretty sure he was probably looking at it like, man, I can really appeal with the Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movement with, you know, telling this story. Like, they're totally going to like this. And I'm going to, you know, add in, hey, don't forget to watch my movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's honestly what it felt like to me. And it was like, no, that was probably the worst story that you could have told to try to bring these two groups in to come see your movie. <laughs> yeah, and then later on he did, like, smaller interviews and, like, he got caught by paparazzi and news reporters, like, try to fix what he said, but it overall just ended up him stumbling more and more into, like, just, probably just been like, zzz, zzz, but you know, say sorry, and like, zzz. But you know what really made me mad about the outrage towards him? I felt like more people got angry at him than they did Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Now, we're talking about, can you separate the art from the artist? And I see a lot of people. Oh, man, that's a whole nother bag, dude. Oh, no, let me tell you something. I see a lot of people that I know Listen, okay, let, let me get one thing straight here, all right? Wait, so, before we jump into that one, uh huh. can I go up into another little baggie that I brought up earlier? Go ahead. Okay, because that's a whole well, <laughs> and I think we all kind of feel the same. I think you more so because you were, well, we all at one point were in different levels of into it. Yeah. So, uh, my current out, well, I don't want to say outrage. I am not surprised, but I am disappointed in the news media that's coming up about fake McNoga. Read how to say his last name. I've listened to him for years. He's been in a lot of animes as prominent voices for a lot of characters I love. Edward Elric. Um, he was in Orin High School Host Club. <coughs> uh, I love Orin High School Host. He's been in so many different, like, hundred over the past 20 years. And since 2003, he's had allegations of sexual misconduct. There is an allegation of rape that came up with a hotel room. and it's Or his involvement with something that could be rape. It's still, like... Pretty much, he's he's become a, like, okay, I'm going to be honest here. He's a celebrity, yeah, but on the celebrity levels, I don't really put voice actors as up there with the A-listers. Like the, I, I, I give A-listers to, like, hip-hop or R&B rappers and, and movie celebrities, like Angelina yeah. Jolie. And they're like the Harvey A-listers for conventions, basically. Yeah, they're the A-listers for conventions. For conventions. and But they're probably, like, uh, probably like D-list. Yeah, because honestly, we had mentioned Kevin Hart, if he was like in something a, with... A step above mimes. <laughs> Side <nod. laughs> Where are stuntmen? Oh, uh, it's sad. They need to have their own movie award for that. I think I saw you posted like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not that it, I care about awards. I really don't. He doesn't. I mean, I don't either, to be honest. But... The Scream Awards were the only ones that ever mattered. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I missed that one. See? see. <laughs> but, yeah. He's had allegations for years, and every year it's picked up, tossed down. I think money's thrown at it, or it's hushed. Near this year, not this year, but in the past two years, it's gained momentum again, where the case has been opened up. The victims, who, to them in their life, they this is their reality, this is their truth. And I wanted to say, I don't think that there's real. Well, okay, in the case of Jesse Smollett, it was all just fake, but. When it concerns a bunch of people, I don't think there's just one real story and then the other ones are fake. There are different real realities to the people that they live every day, and to them, this was something that was a problem. Vic McNoga, I'm just going to say Vic, he's been seen in the con scene, he's been reported by con attendees and um, volunteers for the conventions and staff for the conventions of having... um, Ir- uh, irreputable behavior towards underage Wait, attendees. Wait, so this got brought up numerous occasions at these cons? What do you mean? Like these allegations. Yeah, th- well, he yeah, he has continued, like, several of these allegations have gone up. He has over 100 cases filed against him. Over 100 in his actual, re- like, it's in his files. Holy Since 2003. Shit. Several Whoa. different, yeah, what? suits filed against him on sexual allegations within, even within the voice acting community. There have been several women. It's because Monica Riel, and I'm sorry, I don't really know who she voiced. I kind of stopped keeping up with that. 
sometime in the late 2000s. But I mean, it's still watch anime, so. But she came, like, she was another voice in it, and she spoke up for the victims and, you know, pretty much added her voice to them. And it brought it back to surface again. Like, no, we really need to focus on this this time. We cannot let it be crushed by the weight of this guy's status. Vic Mc... Vic is a very prominent and pretty... He's an A-lister in the con scene, in the voice acting scene. He's picked over a lot of people. And his fans have turned and, like, death death threats to other voice actors, a lot of other women. Um, They've boycotted conventions where people have said that Vic has done these things to them there. They've just gone... Buck you know, I'm actually wild. not mad that they're boycotting the conventions. Good that they're not there. <laughs> you, know? you know, you got to point. Like, they're, you know that? I mean, cons are already a very dangerous place because it's like a lot of people think they can get away. A lot of guys and a lot of women. They, I'm not going to just shrug it off. There are women who grab other girls' what, ass What's there. her name? Um, Momo-kun. There we go. Yeah. Like, no. That's oh, disgusting. Speaking of which, I heard that she was at this Casa Con. Because I think what? a couple of my friends. She was there? Yeah, I think a couple of my friends said that, you know, she was completely shunned, yeah. but she was there. And I'm thinking, I mean, she can still go. Why? What, what, see, that's what, but why? I feel like the cons should have a blacklist of people. They that damn known. right should. That if, if you're seen by security and you are known for these allegations of sexual assault or worse, you should not be in this public space with other people. You are not stable to be around these people. Oh, I'm a little mad about this I'm, now. I didn't that, even know she was there. That yeah, so she was there, and this guy has been basically getting covered for. So no, wait a minute, this guy has been being covered for before. Like Conan was like the big thing it is now. Yeah, he has this giant like imagine a mountain of fan people of 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 his fans, and they're just been falling down and just like attacking and berating his victims. They refuse to believe. I even read a post online today where someone was like, "Oh man, uh, see." I don't really know. Dude, this, this person is, is just a regular fan of Vic. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm a fan of him as Edward's voice and other voice actors. I feel like I can still uh, appreciate those animes with those characters that he gave personality and voices to. But I do not condone his actions and how he's taking advantage of fans. That's Yeah, because you literally have people who run to anime and, you know... It's an outlet. They use it as an outlet. They love the characters. Yeah. They connect with the characters. They idolize so, the characters. Right. So getting the chance to meet their meet a voice actor is like um, meeting your idol. Yeah. Or whatnot. They literally idolize these people. I mean, um, it's something I can't really connect with. Um, because I'm I'm more so like in the world and in the character as far as like cartoons and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't really want to. Imagine that there's a human voice, and <laughs> you know, it, yeah, yeah, like you would probably like. Take I don't want to imagine that there's a regular. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I would. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, like, um, someone cosplaying in a dope Sonic outfit. I'll probably you know take a picture of before I take a picture with uh what Jalil White. White yeah. yeah. I mean, I probably <laughs> still might want a picture with them, but. You know, to be honest. But has Urkel, though. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if you yeah. ask him that, he'll probably punch you dead in the he face. He might. He's all swollen, you know. He might punch you. <laughs> yeah. I, I can take it. <laughs> but it's just the fact that when he's gone onto Twitter, he's apologized for these things. Mm. He's apologized for the allegations. He's apologized because it's becoming a larger number. He's like, yo, I didn't know that there was people in the field that felt this way towards me and they never said anything to me. And it's like... I deeply regret because I enjoy working with some of you people. I feel horrible if I've ever made you feel uncomfortable situations. And they're like, that apology would work if your actions represented that when I first said no. A lot of them have said you were told no. It's like your apologies will work if this was like 15 cases and it was coming into light. It was like over 100 cases. Like 100. Over 100, yeah. Like Shoot, I don't even think that's Cosby's number. (sighs) Ain't he at like, what, 50? At, or like 60? Yeah. Something's well, up there. Yeah, in, a, in a Cosby's case, it know. only takes one time for <laughs> like <they're, laughs> you oh. you you drug a girl and yeah. you have you have sex with her. Like that's there's true. no there no, that's he, no. He, and I feel like Vic. He's like, now I he's never knew to you guys weren't okay with it. No, yeah, no. I don't know. that's cool, man. That just put that one in the basket and just roll it down the hill, mm, set it on no. fire a little bit. How's yeah. he doing in jail? <laughs> <laughs> you 
sorry. I don't even know how to take I that question. Know. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what to say about that? I mean, he's protected from all this global warming, right? <laughs> hey, yo, go ahead. <laughs> The worst thing, you know, prisons might be the most fit for the apocalypse, for real. It's like they're all tough and they have a good diet. They go to sleep on time. He's super old. Okay, not him. But I'm talking <laughs> about like... He's kind of old. Yeah. Like him tough. You know, I heard he got like, I don't know. Like he's the last one that you want to become like a leader in the apocalypse. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> oh, that's disturbing. Can you... Yo, it, it the, is. the family guy who has been... Oh, oh God! Oh, I don't want to think about but this. But I, I feel bad because I still feel like for his era, he was, you know, the TV dad that you know can still be like that could still be there. But I definitely yeah. shouldn't. Should they put? Okay, do y'all feel like they should put Cosby Show back on the air? Hold, it, hold I'm up. not saying wait, if they wait, haven't listen, or not. I'm about to get right on that right now. That's what I was freaking oh, okay, out about. Go ahead. Because okay. here's another thing I've been wanting to say f- for a while now, because. The main thing, the thing with the Cosby case, clearly that split people up real fast. Yeah. yeah. You know, you had people defending them, mostly guys, and people going against them. Mm-hmm. And one thing about it, like, you know, a lot of guys were going with the whole conspiracy. It was because he's a successful black man. He was trying to take over M- uh, N- uh, mm. N- NBC and all these things. Yeah. And now here's the thing, because, yeah, they canceled the Cosby show. But let's not forget with the father in seventh heaven who oh. was called you know he was recorded uh they i, I don't remember what, what was actually said in the recording but long story short you find out he was a pedophile mm-hmm. seventh heaven didn't get canceled though oh did he get taken off the show oh the show's been off the air for years oh but they just well no i'm talking about like back the show you saying the show was already off the air. Yeah. By the time these. Yeah. Oh, oh, but they were showing reruns. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. They were showing reruns. Show oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the thing about it, what I like people to look at, I'm like, is it po- Isn't it possible that it can be that not? Yes, the allegations are true, but it's also a racial thing, because do people not use the worst people as uh as an excuse? To condemn everyone? Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm sure they're going after him because he's black. But, you know, to be honest, I'm pretty sure he probably actually did it, too. And I think the very fact that his show got canceled and Seventh Heaven didn't is evidence of that. Because, like, again, there was a lot of debate even now about how guilty Cosby was. But this guy from Seventh Heaven, he it was no debate. He was caught talking about this. Mm. Plain and simple. He molested. So these Jesus. recordings were recorded after Seventh Heaven or during the production of the. I, I have no. To be that's on- what I want to know because it's like if it was during, then shame on them for continuing it, and these people were just holding on to the recording for it. It, it should have been off the air as soon as those recordings were, like reveal or, or recorded. Well, like I said, well these recordings came out. Th- these recordings came out recently, though, like oh, okay. around around the same time as. The allegations about Cosby came out, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. like I said, Son of Hell has been off the air for a while now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know how many years. But the, the, this recording, and like I said, I don't know if the recordings were old or new or what, but they they they, they showed up like, like within the last, like, like last three years maybe. I mean, wasn't that like the same thing for one of those game show hosts? Like the ones that, I don't know if it was, I want to say it was The Price is Right. Cause they they got like the the nice girls right, that be showing show off the, yeah yeah like yeah, Bob Fortune. Barker right I think that was yeah. his name yeah, like there was allegations with him um mistreating those girls and it was like it was never made into a you thing. know now that I think about it, that does sound familiar yeah. I mean like, the thing is it was like it was like it was mentioned but then it was like kind of swept under the rug and whatnot and then he just went on, and got to retire. With a, you know, hmm. that's like with his such name. such a common case, though, and that's the part that I don't feel like you should be surprised about, but you can still be disappointed in, is, is that in almost every field of work, you're going to find cases of sexual harassment that were swept under the rug, where the victim was left with this scar forever, and probably, like, a, a scar that was either, depending on how it, like, uh, how it shaped their lives, if it shaped their lives at all, either way, there's, like, you will find this in every field of work. Because it was allowed for so long, and we shouldn't be tolerant of it anymore. 
And I like that right now we're trying to shift the tolerance level. But one thing I want to point out about that, and this is one reason I brought up Hulk Hogan, because... Oh, here we go. Wait, hold on. Okay, so with that being said, (laughs) I saw a post about... Because that's a huge dive, dude. I saw a post of someone like, oh, man, but the victim stories don't make sense. None of it adds up. I don't know. And they were like, they posted, like, they've been stirring the pot for a minute now. And this person doesn't know, is not on the con scene whatsoever. They're not a voice actor. They just, they're not in it at all. And a voice actress who's worked very recently in the same movie as Vic came to their post. Never seen this before. Came to their post and she said, she literally said, like, she took a neutral stance on it, but... Don't dispute the allegations of the the victims, and at the same time, don't um don't stir the pot. Damn. And it was like, basically, sit the mess down. You're not there. You don't know Vic. You don't know those women. You're not even anywhere near that scene of that level. So for yeah. you to have be like, yeah, those victims are liars. Like, no, no, they they're just trying to get get them for what? Do you know how hard it is when you come out? At this point, we should know, because if anybody keeps track with the political news, Brett Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford, sorry, Dr. Blasey Ford, I believe, like, she literally, her family went through, she had to move her family from home just for coming out against this um, nominee for the Supreme Court, I believe. Sorry, I'm trying to remember that. <clears throat> her life got pretty messed up, all because she brought up an allegation of a sexual assault, allegations of rape from the 70s. And her family, her entire life, everything, she became a target. It's not, there's no glory in being, in coming out as a victim of sexual assault. There's no glory in it. Yeah. So, I don't, you know, when people like Jason like a, Smith, I un- I understand, Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Because it's like, yeah, you know, you have, have, you have had cases of people crying wolf. Ugh. But then you have cases, legitimate cases, of women coming out. And them still being ridiculed. Or hated or whatnot because yeah. of it. But they deserve both cases deserve fairness in investigation of what really right. happened. You know, it's basically the the, the, the the thing. The best thing doing sidelines is shut up and wait for the evidence. Like Just you know, shut that's up. yeah. Regardless of where you where your feelings lie, it's like you're not there. You don't know the people. Sit on the sideline and wait. And that's so, the don't rally hatred do. towards. Like don't so, try to rally up others with you in hatred. So here's the here's the confusing thing, right? Mm-hmm. Cause well, you know, we, as we was talking about with the Cosby Show, now we know um, Bill Cosby he created it, and you know not just with Bill Cosby, but R. Kelly with his CDs, Michael Jackson with his his you know his Legacy. songs, his music videos, um, Roman Polanski and his movies. No man is an island. Yeah. For these projects, they had other people. So it's like if you bulk out, um, like you were just like, well, you know, I don't like this voice actor, so I'm not gonna listen. I'm not gonna watch Full Metal Alchemist, or I'm not gonna watch uh, Rooney Kenshin. Like you're kind of, you're you're looking at like I'm gonna hurt them, but you're also hurting the other people who didn't have anything to do with what that person did. Yeah. Now, I have two answers for that because it really comes down to did said powers that be know? Because that I feel like question. if they know... If they knew? Then, unfortunately, you might have to take that stand about it because sometimes I have this saying where I feel like, you know, it's better for everyone to suffer equally than just a few people. Mm-hmm. Because if everyone has to deal with a problem... That everyone has to do something about it, right? And like, I'll take it back to like when uh, with Mel Gibson when he directed uh, Apocalypto. Um, right before this movie came out, he was pulled over with a DUI and he made uh, some anti-Semitic yeah. remarks. Right, <laughs> I remember that. And people were about to boycott the movie, but I'm like, well, but look, you have this movie that has indigenous people. Mm-hmm. In their history, j- just barely, I want, we'll mention later how inaccurate historically that movie is. But long <laughs> story short, it's showing a side of history and culture that you do not get to see pre- presented a lot. I mean, we talk about re- representation a lot. That yeah. movie was representing. There is, you know, that movie is purely Mexican. Everyone in that movie is, well, yeah, everyone in that movie is Mexican or Central American, and, you know, 
It's like I said, with this movie, it's kind of confusing. But long story short, at the end of the day, Mel Gibson was, I believe, the director and the producer. Now, of course, this case is different because this incident happened after the fact, and yeah, it was on the spot. This isn't like he. He, you know, this wasn't like the entire film company knew that he was saying racist remarks throughout the making of this movie. It wasn't like that. This right. happened after the movie was done. It had literally nothing to do with the movie. It's just him being a drunk idiot, you know? Yeah. And and it's like, well, why make this movie separate? It's like, I could see maybe if he had starred in it, but this is the well, one of the movies he's in that he doesn't star in. You know, you're just seeing... And, uh, you know, these are, like, no-name actors, mind you. But people want to boycott it because they claim, because he's associated with it yeah, and whatnot. But you're also going to be boycotting, the, you know, the people, families, and, you know, the people that put a lot of their blood, sweat, and tears into the creation of this movie. And, you know, that's kind of why I have really... <sighs> I've been kind of battling this, this small demon recently. All right. This is why I've really been ha- kind of having some mixed feelings, some mixed feelings about Birth of a Nation, the uh, the Nate Parker movie. Okay. <sighs> because I, because th- th- on one hand it's like what he did was terrible, you right. know. Yeah, uh, I was wondering if you was gonna bring him up. Yeah, you know him and his and the writer actually of the film. I think I think it was. His, Right, whatever. Him and his buddy, his college buddy, were accused of uh, raping this woman back in college. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, they both did time for it. All right, so let's remember this. And according, because the, the, this was brought up by uh, the victim's sister, I believe, if not brother, but I believe it was the victim's sister. And she said that. You know, her sister was tormented by the fact that Nate Parker was, you know, he was becoming more and more of a star in Hollywood and whatnot. And then he made this movie, funded it, funded it himself, directed it, and starred in it. And, you know, it's about Nat Turner, you know, a slave who rebelled and against his masters and uh, was in a, in a result of 50 dead white people, you know. And... Obviously, this is an important part of history. You know, it, it should have been, in theory, uh, a big moment in in black cinema. You talking about a independent black film funded by a black man about a black rebellion? That's pretty important. Mm-hmm. But the story came out, and 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 the main controversy was was that because, well, at least the early reports I had heard, is because they made Nat Turner made it. Uh, not Nat Turner, Nate Parker made it seem like he was avenging uh, rape in the movie. And one thing I had to give credit to about uh, the the writer of the situation is that she said she does feel like Nat Turner's story deserves to be told, but the story also needs to be known. Now, I did eventually watch the movie when it came on cable. And one thing I can say that's not what initiated the rebellion in the movie. Actually, the rape scene kind of happens er- somewhat early on, and it's just every you know every bad thing about slavery that you see depicted throughout the movie is what ultimately leads up to the rebellion. So, the way it was reported originally was not true at all. I can honestly say that. But even still, I can definitely understand the discomfort with that. You know, person. Um, you know, raped someone years ago, and now he makes a movie about avenging people being raped. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, that is a little... You know, and... You know, it's, it's really hard for me. And again, I mean, I can't sit here... You know, one of my favorite movies is Cannibal Holocaust, and that movie ended... Oh, God, you just... There's too triggered. many... Yeah, there's too many things... Wrong with how that movie was made. From why the, would you show me that? I was so young. <laughs> okay, in fairness, y'all asked me to show y'all a lot of things that I actually tried to stop y'all from watching, but y'all just insisted because y'all bad. I think it was only Cannibal, and then I walked away. Everything else, it was like that's the rest of y'all. y'all. Oh yeah, I walked away. You that's know, true. I'm you, quick. Yeah, you, you, you. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Yeah, but that was the moment. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about a lot of is. 
And I guess it's different because a lot of this with Campbell Holocaust I found out after I watched it. And where Birth of a Nation I knew beforehand. And, you know, this is what I'll say. It, it seems like his Nate Parker's career is over because if you look at his IMDb, it's dried up ever since. Mm. Um, You know, it's up to you to watch the movie. And but do realize again there was other people involved in this movie as we, we've been bringing up and it also is a big part of history, even though I think it's a little easier to condemn this movie over Apocalypto because again, Nate Parker actually starred in this movie in the lead role, avenging one of the crimes he went to jail for. It's kind of awkward. I think, you know, if you are a person who's done something, maybe you should make amends to the victim before you become a celebrity. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the only thing. Or just make amends, period. I think that's, like, the one thing is, like, we by making amends, making a public, oh, I'm so sorry. You're not saying sorry to the person. You're saying sorry that you got caught for doing this. That's well, a, that's and a... the fact that you're kind of, you know, monetizing off of, for Nate, yeah, yeah, for Nate's it, sense, it kind of monetized off of a victim's experience. Yeah, that's pretty. Like that's just that's the level where you just kind of shovel dirt, you just set it on fire. That's you know, there's levels to it. That's the level now, where you shovel dirt. Another thing I want to point out. Now, this is also I'm saying this off of the assumption that he was 100 percent guilty. Because to be honest, I don't actually know that. Um. I'm just looking at stipulations about it. It's like, you know, because the other thing about it, the uh, the victim did, in fact, commit suicide. Oh. Um, yeah. And, and uh, according hard. to, you know, the, the sibling uh, telling the story, it was... Well, I mean, I ain't gonna say it was for that very reason that he was he was becoming more famous, but that was a, a added factor about it. So, you know, <laughs> you know, if... You know, it's it, it, it. It, 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 the thing. What I'm trying to say with that is, again, I don't know any of these people personally. I'm hearing the story through the media, which, you know, is what the media is, and that can go both ways because there's certain things about the media they put things out there that are half truths that ruin careers. But on the flip side, <laughs> a lot of people get away with things because the media doesn't report on it. Yeah. So it's. It's, it's it's hard. Can that, you separate the art from the artist? I personally can. And the reasons why and and again, it's a a uh we call it a a one to one basis. I I look at every situation oh, case by case. case yeah, case yeah. by case basis. Um because I approach things differently cuz I I originally intended to see Breath of a Nation in theaters and then I heard more and more about this case. I just didn't feel comfortable going. Um, I couldn't sit through the movie. There's some things that I just can't. I can't. I feel too much. <laughs> <laughs> I cry and too much, and I just do. No, I couldn't. That's understandable. But um, but of course, like I say, I I listen to a lot of music from everything from like gangster rap to black metal, and a lot of those people have shoddy past. But it doesn't have to be controversial genres. As I said, Chuck Berry. Um, not to be confused with every, Chuck Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not to be confused with Chuck Brown. Um, I was like, <gasps> and then and then okay, back to Hulk Hogan. Since wait, I want to bring that up and I want to make that a separate podcast. I feel like that's something I really want to talk about. I'll tell you why afterwards in the little okay. introduction. Well, 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 let me say this. Since okay, I'm being censored here. I feel like that'd be really good. In the, uh, <laughs> I, I have I want to involve a whole podcast about or a whole episode about that. Well, okay, Hulk Hogan. Well, and further into the industry that he's a part of. Oh. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I okay. want to make that yeah. a big thing. But, well, this is what I will say. Like, okay, as much as I officially stopped liking Hulk Hogan, I still overall, like, accept that he's a wrestling icon. I mean. You like his character. I, yeah, I like his character, and I can still watch his matches. You know, it that hasn't changed, honestly, at all. Honestly, my issue well, like I said, we'll get more into this on on you know a future episode about that whole situation. But long story short, speaking for myself, yeah, I can in fact separate the art from the artist because first and foremost, once the art is out there, it's no longer theirs. It gets interpreted the way it does, and then 
depending on like if you take up like the music industry, like a lot of these people aren't even writing their own songs. <laughs> like it's, yeah. the songs yeah. most of the times don't even belong to them. It's like when it comes to film, you know, films can range up to about like three hundred people working on a film. Exactly. And with all the producers and the companies and all these other factors. It's like, you know, what really makes a film belong to anyone, you know? Like notice if a film is directed by a known name director, but the star of the movie is Brad Pitt or Samuel Jackson, you're going to think of it as their movie. You're not thinking of the director who doesn't have a name. Yeah. But if the movie's by Steven Spielberg or, or um, uh, uh, dear God, uh, Stanley Kubrick or someone, you're going to remember their name because they're well-known directors. But what if it's by a well-known writer or a well-known producer? It varies up and reshapes all the time. Then it's like, you know, as I say, and then another thing with me, to me, it's easier to separate the art from the artist when their crimes are, like, not related, if that makes sense. Like, it's a little more awkward if if someone who was, let's say, an advocate for sexual freedom got caught with child porn. Then, yeah, I, I don't know if I can, you know, because... That was kind of their thing. Sex was kind of their thing. Now it's tarnished because, you know, their wicked sex life, if that makes sense. I, I <laughs> You know, it, it's, a, it's a little bit different when there's like a direct link between the two, the subject and the, and, the, and the person. But then you have like Lovecraft. It's like, you know, his, a lot of his writing, and, and I say a lot because some of it does, but a lot of his writing doesn't have any racism in it. Or at least not directly. But he was known for making some pretty racist and anti-Semitic statements back in his day. But, you know, you, you know, it's it's like... it's For you, it's case by case. It's very case by case. But, but generally speaking, I can, you know, yes, I can separate the two. What about you, Neff? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Like I said, you can't... No man is an island and... You have so many people who are a part of a project. It's kind of unfair to to boycott one person, and you're affecting you know all of these people, all their families. You know that's just trying to work in their craft and whatnot. So it definitely, to me too, it comes kind of by case by case. But I do believe what uh, MDC said that. When, when it's released, when the artwork is released, it's open to anybody. So I try my best to just disconnect from the artist. And what see, about you? What? And see, for me, glad, glad, glad. See, for me. I want to say something after you, though. It is case by case. Um, I feel like um, I can disconnect from the art, the art from the artist. It's not as easy sometimes because I. I feel a lot. I feel heavily. And so I feel betrayed a little bit, not entirely betrayed. The whole point is I didn't know the person. So if I find out these allegations are true and this is something that I'm offended by, it's hard. There's a stint there. There's a little black hole, depending on whatever it might have been. It depends on, you know, time. It depends on how I, how I feel about forgiving this thing that pretty much if the person has the case is if the person has um been alleged of these things been found guilty and has done the time then for me the setup is that it's a black stain it's there i don't know how much i can enjoy it but there are levels of it that i can get back into enjoying there are parts where i just drop it i'm just like no i don't want anything to do with this it makes me feel bad every time i think of it but for anyone who might say that, oh, well, the people in the companies, the people, the small people, I'm talking about the ones that help cover it up. The small people who, this is their job to do the sound, the media recording or the sound proofing or the tech people that behind the stages or con attendees or whatnot or the staff, volunteers. And they legit didn't know that this was happening or they're just, you know, I'm just here to do my job. I'm not covering for anybody. For anyone to be like, oh, well, they should have known and they should have uh, immediately, like, they're wrong because they were there, too. It's not fair to them, to be honest. Like, people that are attacking cons because they decided to, yeah, Vic can't come here anymore. Like, 
the Colin's doing right by the people who were assaulted. That's how I feel. That's my opinion on the matter. And to turn around and put that con under death threats, those those con attendees, people who had nothing to do, they probably don't even know about the allocations of it. They're just going to the con and dressing up as Hatsune Miku. And you're bringing threats of bombs and violence and, and all these things to this the con as a whole. It, those are pretty extreme cases. That's crazy, to be honest. I'm sorry. That's pretty crazy. Um, one In the thing, sense of, like, sociopathic crazy. <laughs> one thing I also wanted to say... Um... Again, because I think that's the other thing. It really comes down to you personally. You know, it just depends on if you could do that. But, um, oh, crap. I'm trying not to lose my train of thought. One one of the things is, Oops. um, with me, it also depends, like, okay, is this something a person did or is it something they're doing? Because that's an approach right there. Like, if, if there's a, a musician who's actively doing something, no, I'm not supporting them. I'm going to be very vocal against them. I'm like, yeah, you go to jail for 10 years, then make a record, and maybe, maybe I'll listen to it, you know? But if you're active, if this person is actively doing something, they have not met any consequences. Not only am I going against them, but I'm going against those who permit it. I'm going against those who ignore it, and I'm going against those who are making excuses for it. I'm like, no, this person did a bad thing. They need to get that handled. Until then, they need to make no records, star in no movies, write no books, paint no pictures. They need to go to jail and and handle it. Even though a lot of people actually do art in jail and they get it produced. So that's a whole nother thing to think about. Yeah. <laughs> um, now that I think about it. But, um, you know, and, and that's another thing. As I said, you know, I'm a fan of a lot of or a lot of people's work but I you know I let it be known in conversations that yeah this person did this thing you know I like their music but you know they did this thing <laughs> you know yeah. it's a fact they did but, this thing they've been proven it's a fact and now they do the time but another thing I think about you know generally speaking this goes beyond art you know I mean it's really it's getting increasingly hard to boycott things nowadays because if you want to boycott a company guess what they own five other sub companies that you probably consume <laughs> you know mm. and there's just it's just, and i think you know writing letters is very important that's the thing that a lot and you know these companies do listen because in any event it's it's bad for them but do realize it's like well you're barely hurting a lot of these people's wallets seriously like i mean even if r kelly's career ended tomorrow he's still what a millionaire probably you know <laughs> so there, you know, there's so many yeah. factors to things. And that's why, like, I kind of get irritated when people get extra emotional about things. Because, like, you know, you're honestly spending a lot of energy on not doing much, to tell you the truth. I mean, you make up your own mind about how you want to deal with it. But you also have to be realistic about, you know, what your contribution to the situation really is. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's an important case. You're allowed to have your own feelings and thoughts about these different things, whether you can separate the art or the artist. That's totally up to you. Our opinions are our own, but it really depends on how you go out into the world and you you, you show those opinions, you deal with your opinions. You know, If you're going to be out there rallying others around you in a form of hate towards an opinion that opposes yours, you're no better in the situation, or you're, you're no help in the situation, to be honest. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you probably really can't help the situation unless you're a part of it. Yeah. And if you're not, like, you can help the situation um, either, well, honestly, just kind of, if you're not really there, you kind of should just be quiet and just let them do what they need to do. If things turn out where, because I don't want to say that you should be quiet. Voices matter. Um, And I don't want to say that, but, I mean, I go back to the whole hate speech. Well, thing, I, I, right? think, I, I think I look at it like this. It's like. You, you should say subject. things with a clear mind. It's the best way to put it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is, it's, uh, that's just how complicated the situation yeah, is. It really it's, is. It's really, it's because, you know, I'm not going to tell anyone they should, they should be quiet on these things. I mean, it right. should, it, need, it needs to be talked about. Especially really, if, you, yeah, you know? you're right, yeah. But. You you had to you kind of had to understand your own limitations. It's kind of like when a tragedy happens, like a, a mass shooting or whatever, and I see people react, and people get like they they spend a lot of energy being upset about it. And don't get me wrong, 
I'm upset deep down too, but I'm thinking, well, what honestly can I do at this very second? Absolutely nothing. I can educate myself on, on law. I can educate, you know, there's other things I can do in the long run, but there is literally no reason for me to exert energy on this situation. It really isn't, especially knowing that there's a, a lot of other things that will that are are personally affecting me or can personally affect me when this event happened elsewhere. And I think that's arguably one of the issues nowadays. You know, we get so we're quick to attack um, each other's point of view online or whatever, but no one's really discussing anything. And I think that's why things get so all over the place and confusing. Like when um, Baby is Cold Outside got banned on the radio for like, a couple of days and <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be played anymore to be honest. Yeah, I think that was like it. the rest of the season. Yeah. But I mean and you know that goes with a quote that I saw where it was like people don't listen with the intent to understand, people listen to the with the intent to uh reply. And um that's true. That's that's very much true. I mean, we talked about that in our first episode. When it came to proper representation, you know, when you go out there, you know, have conversations, have conversations with other people. If you want to if if you find yourself uh, a white writer or shoot a black a black writer and you want to write about a different race and you want to represent them properly, go out there, talk to talk to them. Yeah. You know, talk to That's talk to point, black yeah. people, talk to white people, whatever, you know, whatever race and whatnot. That's. That's the best way, you know, listen, listen, and, you know, you'll understand that, you know, what you probably thought, you know, how that, you know, particular person um, might have acted isn't true. You know, it was yeah. just a stereotype and you save yourself a lot of anguish when people roast the shit out of your book. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with uh, episode six. Yeah, that was a pretty heavy one. Yeah, we that talked about a, a lot of one. stuff. A lot of stuff. Where I probably wouldn't necessarily, I don't know. It was good. It was good. Yeah. It was It was a lot of recent stuff. Like, I feel like just yeah. us as black creators, it, it kind of needs to be talked about. Like, you have, yeah. you have, you have a lot of, um, like, you have a lot of creators where it's like they can kind of sidestep that stuff um but it's like we get put into this hold where there's not just so much you know like mm -hmm. it's like we just get put into like this whole pot of of blackness and whatnot so it's kind of hard like you see some people where you know rappers or whatnot they want to stray away from politics or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you really can't because this is the black experience. Yeah. You're going, they're going to group you in with the, um, they're going to group you in with the Colin Kaepernick's. They're going to group, group you up with, uh, Jesse. They're going to, they're going to group you up mm -hmm. with, 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 with everything, you know, with Obama, with, with the good and the bad. So it's like, we have to share our voice on, on this matter because, all in all, it still clarifies in art. So yeah, yeah, it's it's been your girl artist wife midnight. That was weird, but <laughs> man, your boy writer husband Neff featuring MDC. MDC. Oh, and though I hate James Woods as a person, Vio Drum is still one of my favorite movies. So that's that. That's that. <laughs> we out. Peace. <laughs>